A performance improvement plan is a wonderful time to work with your doctors to change performance often for the better. You know, we've been using these tools in clinical practice for years, but we somehow have never used them in a management situation. But they work beautifully, and it's really part of basic human resources. What you want to do is identify what you're trying to improve, convert it to a measurable content, typically a metric with a benchmark. You want to create a time frame, like we're trying to do this in one month or three months. You want to assign accountabilities. For instance, the person will be responsible and the leader will be responsible. And most importantly, you want to have consequences for both successfully and unsuccessfully completing the plan. Now, what this might look like in real life is like, for instance, we'd like your on-time uh, OR starts, block time, to improve by 25% within three months. If you're able to do this successfully, uh, we will uh, allow you to have unlimited block time at your choice of time. If you're unable to do this, you will lose your block time. So you always want consequences. And Dr. So-and-so, the head of the surgical department, will support you in your efforts, and you'll be responsible for achieving the benchmark. And obviously, ideally, you'd like the clinician to come up with the plan first uh, so they can hold themselves accountable. You want them to sign it. You want the leader to sign it. And you want this to be a living document of what you've agreed to do. This will not only drive performance improvement, but most importantly, will make it accountable and visible to other people. Well, the most common physician conduct issues is typically saying something you later regret out of typically fear. For instance, when a, a physician senses that their patient is in danger and it's because of some system's failure, like, for instance, the monitor didn't work or the nurse came up with the wrong diagnosis or uh, something in the system broke down like the defibrillator didn't work, the physician will manifest fear very often as anger. And this will come out in some type of inappropriate statement that the physician later regrets. So the problem with allowing it to just sit like is, is that what you enable and support, you endorse. And what you don't want to do is endorse inadvertent conduct or communication that undermines ongoing communication and care of the patient. So you really have to address it, and you want to set performance expectations around conduct. You want to have measures around conduct. There have to be consequences around conduct. And finally, you have to be willing to no longer work with a clinician that you've tried to work with, but you couldn't get to a reasonable place in the bell-shaped curve. And that's really painful for both organizations and for physicians themselves because they never want to treat a colleague like an outlier. Uh, but every once in a while, conduct is so significant that you have to take some type of professional review action uh, that involves corrective action, and that's often very painful. The key thing to do with professional conduct, prevent its occurrence by having good policies, uh, good proactive communication, have a safety valve for physicians to address their systems failures issues, and obviously have a way that the physician can address these issues in a much more constructive and progressive manner than having to do that inadvertent meltdown in the middle of the night. One of the big t disconnects today is the way that physician performance management and strategic planning are totally disconnected. What we do is we go off with the board and the management team to a lovely resort and we talk about the organizational strategy and then we go to our lawyers and we say, why don't you create a template employment agreement that is based on work our views or productivity? And the problem is that the contract's not talking to the strategy and the strategy's not talking to the contract. So what you want to do is link the two. What do I mean by that? Well, if you think that quality is important, safety is important, cost effectiveness is important, if you think that it's important to develop a culture of service or to do clinical integration or to work on your operating margin or reduce operating costs, that's what you should be measuring and that's what you should be incentivizing with physicians. The problem is if you just pay doctors work RVU, you're not saying that quality is unimportant. You simply aren't rewarding anybody for good quality or good care or good service. And what you want to do is you want to take what's important strategically to what then is important to communicate as performance objectives, which becomes performance measures, which becomes compensation incentives, which becomes great outcomes. <clears throat> so you want to always link together the strategy with performance metrics, with outcomes, in a way that makes sense to the physician and makes sense to the organization and can reward both for being able to accomplish these goals and objectives together.
So when you're dealing with conduct issues, there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. Um, H.L. Mencken once famously said, for every complex problem, there's a solution that is simple, direct, and wrong. And if you go up to the doctor and say, doctor, don't be a donkey. Knock it off, doctor. You're being a jerk. Stop being a jerk. Um, get in line. Treat everyone nicely. And then you walk away. You're going to just destroy the working relationship. You'll probably... Um, You'll probably irritate the doctor to no end. You'll probably make their behavior worse, and you probably won't solve any problems. You just may feel better for about six and a half seconds. So obviously, that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is, first of all, you want to set cultural expectations for the entire organization, is we're going to treat everybody well here, and everyone needs to buy into that kind of code, those values, those deep values that we're going to do this differently now. You want to have an appropriate policy that is developed by physicians for physicians. Physicians will resist things that's done by management to them, but they will embrace and champion anything that they do themselves and they control themselves. So you want a policy that's authored by physicians for physicians to hold physicians accountable. And I like looking at conduct as a positive thing, not as a negative thing. So the, rather than having a disruptive physician policy, I like having a code of conduct policy. Uh, which then aspires to a higher level of professional conduct as opposed to punishes people with disruptive behavior. You want to set specific expectations. The best thing to do is to hardwire behaviors <clears throat> that actually prevent unprofessional conduct and optimize good communications, like introducing yourself to the patient and their family, sitting down, turning off your beeper. <clears throat> when there's a concern with the system, have an ARC-type policy where you can say, I have a concern. I'd like to express my concern. Um, I'll go up my chain of command if this is not addressed. Have some type of protocol that when it hits the fan, you have a constructive way to address something rather than a negative way. Obviously, you need to have a pol policy with good performance measures. The performance measures have to have good benchmarks or targets. And the targets have to have good consequences that the physicians agree in advance are reasonable consequences given the number of violations. You need to have a validation process to go through to determine how you're going to validate whether this took place or not and whether it was of risk to patient safety. And finally, you want to be able to honor the agreement by integrity, by creating a totally transparent system that everyone knows what the measures are, everyone knows what the consequences are, and everyone will be treated fairly and the same. So everybody knows this is a democracy. It's a transparent system. We're not going to use this in any way political. We're not going to use this for economic purposes. We're going to use this to optimize patient care, and it's going to be managed by physicians for the physicians themselves. That's the right way to do it.